Hello, welcome to this video of physics. We'll be looking at thermometers. So thermometers. Maybe wondering what is a thermometer? What is it used for? And types of thermometers and their characteristics. So in this video, we'll just talk about the types of thermometers, their use, and certain features of thermometers. So this is a device. used to measure temperature temperature of objects now the temperature can be in kelvin temperature can be in kelvin or in degrees sorry in degrees celsius you need to know that 278 degrees make one Kelvin. That's what you must know. Then, let's go. So, if the temperature can be Kelvin or degrees Celsius, what are we looking at? So, thermometers they are used to measure or to detect a rise or a change in temperature of a certain um, object. For example, if the initial temperature of an object, it was, let me say, it was 5 degrees Celsius, and after some point, you just discover it was, it has risen to 15 degrees Celsius. We are going to use a thermometer to detect the change in temperature. We cannot just detect by uh, our naked eyes. We need to have a device that can measure this thermometer. Then we have types of thermometers. The first one is a clinical thermometer. Clinical thermometer. A clinical thermometer is used for measuring body temperature. What else? It, it has a constriction. These, these, these are characteristics of the clinical thermometer. It has a constriction. And the range ranges from zero or somewhere from 27 to 42. Above that and below 27 is the abnormal temperature. Then what else? This is the structure of uh, a clinical thermometer. So it has something like this. It has a bow. And here in the bulb, there's what we call this mercury. Then this mercury passes like that. Like that. So this is all mercury inside there. That's all mercury inside there. Then this is what we call the bulb. Then this here, like a bend. So to create a constriction then this thing which is coming from this side up to there to create a capillary tube then at here at the end there's a transparent glass we'll talk about it function later but the main function of the constriction is to prevent backflow of mercury. Backflow of mercury into the bowel. When they are measuring a body temperature, what happens? They are going to put it either in the armpit or in the mouth or in the nose, uh, whatever they can detect temperature. But the, so if they have measured the uh, thirty-six point five degrees Celsius, for it to stay at least for a longer period of time, there's this constriction that holds that temperature at that particular time, and it prevents mercury from going back to the bulb here. 
that's the main function of a uh, of a uh, constriction okay so this is a structure of a, a clinical thermometer so you can see that it has it has a constriction right there you can see it and they're saying it's very sensitive these are some of the characteristics because it has a large bowl now take note into this the thermometer is sensitive because of the large bowl and because of the narrow bowl the narrow bowl this the one i said the capillary tube it has got a short range from 35 to 42 and it gives the greater accuracy but the constriction is a sharp bend in the bowl at the bottom of the scale the constriction prevents the contracting of mercury from flowing back into the bulb that's what happens that's what the construction is about the range is from 35 to 42 you must know that and there's a thin wall and a large bulb the other one is the liquid glass thermometer which is known as a laboratory thermometer it has no constriction it's most filled with uh, alcohol or mercury but most in, in in most cases it's just um, um alcohol the thermometer which you utilizes the expansion of the liquid to measure temperature is called a liquid in glass thermometer the liquid most common used is the mercury and alcohol but most of it it's alcohol as long as it's a laboratory thermometer then there's a safety chamber at the end of the day that shows that okay the temperature now has reached this level you have to stop that's what it's about thermometers let's look at the other the last type of thermometer which is the couple thermocouple thermometer the other type of thermometer is a thermocouple this uses electromotive force or an electric current to measure temperature what happens that there will be two regions there will be a region which is cold and there will be a region which is hot one of the regions temperature will, 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 won't be known by the other one we can say 20 degrees so that it will be known so to measure the temperature of this here which is unknown what we do we get two wires we dip here one wire we dip here and we tie there and we dip again then in the middle here there will be what we call a galvanometer it will be measuring the diffraction there will be a lot diffracting so they use more for example they can use copper and iron the wires are soldered and just twisted tied together at the end when the two just are placed in different temperatures as electric current flows the amount of the current depends on the difference in temperature if one of the injection sorry junctions is placed in the non temperature for example the one i've said non temperature here you'll be able to know the temperature because here it's going to read maybe here it, read, it, it reads 50 volts if it reads 50 volts the difference between 50 and 20 will give you the temperature at this region so it will be 50 minus 20 which will give you 30 so the temperature at this will be 30 degrees celsius because it's unknown so whatever value will be recorded by the governometer that will be the value as in terms of temperature you get it then you subtract with that temperature is known to find the temperature of an unknown in unknown region so a thermocouple they're saying it's very sensitive and it has the it can measure very high temperatures it can also measure the temperature of the volcano it's very very sensitive let's look at the differences between mercury and alcohol properties of mercury and alcohol and some of the differences between the two one of them is that uh, it has mercury has a freezing point of 39 or alcohol that's negative 39 degrees Celsius or alcohol has a, a very low freezing point which is negative 112 degrees Celsius you must know that by heart alcohol mercury has a boiling a high boiling point of 357 
or alcohol as a low boiling point of 78 degrees Celsius. It is silver color. Wow, this one is colorless. It expands uniformly. While this one doesn't expand uniformly. These are the, these are the differences. Mercury does not wet the glass. What they mean is that it doesn't stick to glass. You won't see it sticking to glass. But alcohol, you will be seeing droplets there sticking around. around. The other one is that, let's jump to where I just chip, saying, Mercury is poisonous, while alcohol is safe, because people even drink alcohol. It is expensive, of course, while alcohol is cheap. Alcohol is not a good conductor of heat, but mercury is a good conductor of heat. That's why it is even able to respond faster to changes in temperature. I'm previously the total 2021. I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.